signed by Somali stakeholders on May 27, set elections within 60 days' time. However, there is still a lot of work to be done to get there. Issues with details still to be decided include the composition of the electoral committees, how to achieve 30% women's representation, and how security will be coordinated. ADN TV will take an in-depth look at some of these aspects in a five-part series featuring the International Crisis Group's Omar Mahmoud. Mr. Mahmoud is considered a top political analyst observing Somalia and has been quoted in the Washington Post, the East African, TRT World, and other reputable media outlets. He joins us from Northern Virginia. Today we find out what the election committees in Somalia do and why there has been so much arguing over their personnel. They'll oversee the election at the state level. So each state has a, has a state level committee and then there's a federal level committee uh, overseeing the wider process as well. Um, so, you know, the committees are responsible for looking at, you know, it's an indirect election process. So working with the traditional elders, who are selecting the delegates, you know, ensuring that who's appointed in these delegates are, you know, either representative of their clan or respond to the other guidelines that are in there, uh, kind of being involved in overseeing the vote then of those delegates for the MPs and then so on. So they'll basically, you know, oversee the election in each of their areas. The Council of Presidential Candidates recently submitted a list of 67 committee appointees they had problems with. Those complaints ranged from being government employees to federal spies to supporting the administration on social media. Prime Minister Mohamed Roble formed a cabinet-level committee to scrutinize these claims. Those who are competing in the process are hoping to have their allies serve on these committees. And so what the opposition charges is that the, the federal government had previously submitted uh, lists at, at both the federal level and some of the state level committees of people who were actually also working for the government that were part of the intelligence services or other military aspects. So basically people who have conflicts of interest. Robles committee removed about half or 34 of the names that were submitted by the opposition. Abdi Rahman Abdi Shakur is still protesting while others have accepted the results and some opposition politicians haven't commented. It's a pretty big issue because it ties back to this wider dynamic about, yes, you have the rules of the game laid out, but within that, there could be some sort of manipulation or bending of those rules of the game. So if, if one side, for example, has you know, a lot of allies in these committees, you know, in theory, that, that would benefit them come the, the voting process. So they could presumably pressure people, coerce them, bribe them, uh, offer them other incentives? Is, is, is that where we're going? Yeah, I mean, in, in theory, it's an indirect election process. So having allies at any sort of level within this uh, does give you some sort of room for influence and, and maneuver. So, you know, it could be something like that. It could be just looking the other way also, if, if something, um, you know, is going on, you know, at, at times we saw in the last election, there was some certain uh, disputes at a very micro level. And then some of those were taken up to, to higher, um, you know, um, uh, I guess processes within the, the electoral uh, dispute. And some were overturned, some were ignored completely. Abdi Rashid Hashi, former executive director of the Heritage Institute think tank, has publicly advised Roble to appoint well-known people with no ties to either the government or opposition figures. But is that even possible? Such a polarized environment right now you know, everyone's kind of seen on one side or the other, either based on their previous experiences or based on their clan, honestly. Um, you know, it's not impossible to find well-known people that, that are a little bit more politically neutral, and, and I think that can be done, uh, but it does take some time to get there. And ideally, you know, obviously that's something that should have happened months ago, you know, uh, rather than, than talking about it this late in the game. In part two, we will hear Mr. Mahmoud's thoughts of how Somalia might elect a parliament featuring 30% women. ADN-TV will continue to report on developments as Somalia marches to elections.